Hi there. Now, those of you who watch the channel fairly regularly will know that I operate quite a lot mobile, occasionally portable as well. And often I use base loaded antennas or antennas sometimes with a straight whip and a tuner at the base, which in effect is a base loaded antenna, really. Now, quite often I hear people saying, well, it's far better to have a centre loaded mobile whip. So let's look into that. Are centre loaded mobile whips that much better than base loaded. I released a video uh, a week or two ago looking at using loading coils for short verticals like HF mobile whips. And uh, it clearly stated, and if we look at the graphic here, thanks to the ARRL uh, for showing this, that when you center load an antenna, you take away the, the current maximum away from the base. And in fact, you create a more uniform spread of the current throughout the length of the antenna. That will improve radiation resistance and will improve the efficiency of the antenna. In fact, having looked at the work of people like WHJI, uh, I've managed to put together, thanks mainly to his work, uh, a calculator a spreadsheet, which looks at different scenarios with different types of mobile or short vertical antennas. Uh, we, look at, we can look at base loaded, we can look at center, top loaded, non-loaded, and even full size quarter waves for that matter. Now, looking at this graphic here, you can see that uh, when we centre load uh, a fairly short whip, in this case, about a seven foot long whip on, I think this is 40 metres, we uh, increase the power, we increase the radiation resistance, first of all, at the top look, from one and a half on the left to three ohms, we double it. And by doubling it, what we're then able to do is to increase the power radiated at the bottom, out of 100 watts, we radiate about 13 watts, just about, uh, with the base loaded on the left. And when we go to the centre loaded on the right, we increase that to about 23, uh, 23 and a half watts. So in effect, what we're able to do here is to practically uh, double the power out. And that leads to an increase of about, as it says on the graphic, around 2.6 dB, almost 3 dB, almost doubling the power. So you think, happy days. Uh, that in itself then would suggest that centre loading uh, a short uh, vertical, like a HF mobile whip, has to be the way to go. But like so many things in our hobby, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's always a trade-off. And with center loading short antennas like mobile whips, there's certainly one of those. Let's take a look at this. Again, thanks to the ARRL, they published figures here looking at coil loss resistance. Now, the less the resistance, the less loss we have thanks to using the coil. In this case, we looked at, at a, an eight foot, that's a 2.4 meter long mobile whip antenna. Now we've got a table there with two halves. The top half is base loaded. The bottom half is center loaded. Now, if we look at the pair of red arrows, the, the top red arrow pointing at the number three, that is looking at a high Q coil, a Q of about 300, so a pretty, fairly efficient coil. And the ARRL, ARRL even reckons that with sort of average ground loss, we're going to be looking at, uh, well, a, a resistance of about 3 ohms with that high Q. When we, that's at base loaded, okay? Look at the bottom red arrow. That number goes up to 6. So when we centre load with a, again, a high Q coil, same Q of about 300, we double the resistance. Similarly, if we look at the two blue arrows as well, the top one is again looking at base loading, this time though with a fairly low Q coil, which, to, which you know, to be honest, is pretty typical of a lot of manufactured antennas. They're, they usually have quite low Q. And in this case, you can see we have a loss resistance of about 18 ohms with that particular uh, low Q coil on a base loaded antenna on 40 meters. When we look then at the bottom of those two blue arrows, we can see that figure doubles to 36 ohms. So effectively, therefore, when we center load a, an antenna like this, certainly on 40 meters, and it's a similar story, it does, it does reduce slightly the differential, it becomes down a little bit, but certainly on 40 metres, we're doubling our coil loss resistance. And that does take the shine a little bit off the fact that we are centre loading rather than base loading. So why then does that increased loss resistance happen when we 
sent to load an antenna. Well, even though when we sent to load the antenna, it increases the, the, the uniform current across the antenna and therefore that improves our radiation resistance. As you can see here, there are some cons with using a center loaded antenna, shortened center loaded antenna. First of all, the first thing to think about is with base loading, you, low, you require a fairly low value of inductance, so you need a smaller coil. Now, as we move the coil up the antenna towards the center, we require a larger coil. Okay, this is because the capacitance of the shorter antenna section above the coil to the cal body is now lower. We have a higher capacitive reactance. And what that then means is we need more inductance to actually tune the antenna into resonance. That means we need a chunkier, we need a bigger coil. So the coil size and the losses actually increase. And this is especially the case when we're looking at uh, lower frequencies like 40 meters and especially when we go down to somewhere like 80 meters but the lower you go in frequency the greater those losses so using the calculations and the formula provided by tom w8ji let's have a look at comparing then two antennas to see what the differences are actually in terms of center loading versus base loading so let's take a look at this so we've got two antennas uh, they're both seven and a quarter feet long, 2.2 meters, and there's going to be a reason for choosing that length in a minute, which will become apparent. They both have the same ground loss of 10 ohms, so the ground loss is the same as a can average of the ground loss, fairly, fairly reasonable ground loss. Um, we're going to use a low Q of 50 and a high Q of 50 for the coils. We compare those. And as I say, they're both 2.2 meters long, and we're looking at 7.15 megahertz. So once again, we're going to be looking at uh, 40 meters for our comparison. So let's compare then uh, on this antenna, seven and a quarter foot, foot antenna, to 50Q coils. Okay, so two fairly inefficient coils, one being center loaded and one base loaded. Let's take a look at what the calculations tell us. Well, the, uh, the efficiency of that center loaded antenna at 7.25 feet long on 40 meters will be about five and a half percent and with a base loaded about 4.1%. That difference is somewhere around 1.3 dB. So effectively, not a huge difference when we're using uh, two uh, coils, which are fairly uh, inefficient, if you like. Next on the right, let's add then uh, a high Q to both coils. So we've got a center loaded with a 300 Q and a base loaded with a 300 Q on the same antenna. The center efficiency jumps from five and a half to 14 and a half percent. And the base efficiency basically uh, goes up uh, by, 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 by doubles really from 4.1 to 8.4. But the center efficiency goes up a little bit more than the base one does. So difference is now going up to 2.3 percent. And what that tells us is that when we increase the Q of a center uh, of a coil in the center of the antenna, that tends to have a bigger impact, a bigger improvement on the efficiency than it does if we do it with a base loaded. The difference now is about uh, 2.3 dB. Now let's create some imbalance here. Let's now look at a, uh, a center loaded coil with a 300 Q against a base loaded coil with a Q of 50. What are those results? Well, what it tells us is that a center efficiency of 14.4 is against 4.1 for the base. That difference is now five and a half dB. So effectively, therefore, the difference between a fairly high Q uh, center loaded antenna, uh, center, uh, coil at the center of the antenna against a fairly low Q coil at the base of the antenna at this particular frequency, 40 meters, around seven and a quarter feet long, we're looking at a difference of about five and a half dB, about an S unit. Finally, let's swap it around. Let's look at a low Q center coil against a high Q base coil. Can the base coil drag something back? Well, in this case, it does. Let's have a look. So we can see that the center efficiency at five and a half is now beaten by the base efficiency of 8.4%. So in fact, that bottom right-hand side shows that a base loaded coil of a high Q will beat, or can have the potential anyway to beat, a center loaded antenna with a, a coil which has fairly low Q. What is striking about all these differences, though, is that the biggest difference, really, and we're looking at a Q of 300 against a Q of 50. You can have higher Q coils, but 
in the main, when we're looking at manufactured antennas around a certain price point, you're not going to get much more than a queue of 300. So at the end of the day, that difference of about 5.5 dB, 1S unit, is the difference you're going to have between a really, you know, fairly efficient uh, centre-loaded uh, coil, uh, coil at the centre of the antenna, versus a pretty inefficient base-loaded antenna at this length of about seven and a quarter feet for 40 meters. 40 meters is a good band to take this test on because whichever way we look at it, whether we center load or base load the antenna, uh, seven feet, about 2.2 meters, is pretty a pretty small length uh, when it comes to, to a 40 meter antenna. Now, the reason why I chose that length as well is because we're now going to compare uh, two antennas from the same manufacturer, one base loaded, one center loaded. I'm looking at the diamond mobile whips, the mono band whips, which are very well made, have a good reputation. So we're going to look at uh, 40 meters again. We're going to compare their, their basically their, um, their manufactured center loaded whip, which is the same length of what we just looked at, which is 7.25 feet, about 2.2 uh, meters long. And we're going to compare it, look, as we can see here, against the, the base-loaded one on the left-hand side, which, as we can see, is a much smaller length. Well, a third a third smaller at uh, 1.4 metres long. That's about uh, something like about four and a quarter to four and a half feet long, something like that. So, in effect, then, we've got a, a smaller base-loaded versus a longer centre-loaded. So, let's see what these two, what the calculator tells us about these two um, manufactured antennas and what the likely difference they have between their performance, between the shorter base loaded and the longer center loaded. So for both of these antennas, we're going to assume we've got a ground loss once again of about 10 ohms. So let's compare them. On the left hand side, we can see we've got the base loaded antenna, 1.4 meters long. With everything taken into account, assuming a, a coil um, Q of about 50, we're going to have a radiation resistance of about half an ohm, coil resistance of 18 ohms, and an, an assessed efficiency of about 1.6%. So out of your 100 watts, you're going to shove out initially just under 2 watts of those 100. On the right, we've got the centre-loaded version. Now, I mean, that's longer, and that's key, and we'll see why in a minute. So the radiation resistance is now 2.7 ohms, so it's about five times the radiation resistance of the base-loaded. We do have, of course, as we saw before, a doubling of the coil resistance. But the power radiated has gone up from one, one and a half to five and a half percent. So in this case, therefore, the center loaded is about 5.4 dB superior to the base loaded. Now, if you remember, and this is the key thing, when we compared earlier, two antennas of the same length, that's the same length as the center loaded one. So we had a base loaded and a center loaded, both 2.2 meters long, same Q. We saw a difference, if you remember initially, of 1.3 dB. So therefore, out of that 5.4 dB difference, um, 1.3 dB of that is down to the fact it's center loaded. But actually, 4.1, about three quarters of the difference, is down to the fact that the antenna is simply longer. Okay? So, effectively then, a quarter of the difference you see between these antennas is down to the fact that the centre-loaded version is centre-loaded. But actually, that extra 4 dB on top is purely down to the fact that the centre-loaded antenna is another 50% longer, basically, than the base-loaded one. In fact, we can repeat that same experiment looking at the 10 meter versions. All right, so again, we've got a base loaded version for 10 meters, exactly the same length, 1.4 meters, and a center loaded version, which is 2.2 meters long. And again, we can assume they both have a coil Q of 50 ohms. And again, we're still using the same ground loss of 10 ohms for both antennas. And once again, we see a similar pattern as we can see here. So again, we, uh, we see an Im improvement in the center-loaded version, absolutely. If you see the power radiated efficiency is 48% down the right against 21% on the left. So that means the center-loaded is 3.6 dB superior. Notice that's, that's less than it was for 40 meters because at the end of the day, the base-loaded version is longer as a fraction of the wavelength on 10 meters than it would be on 40. So it's less of an issue. 
Now, but when we work out both these antennas as being 7.2 uh, uh, feet long or 2.2 meters long, the difference is only 0.8 of a dB. So yet again, three quarters of that 3.6 dB difference is because the center loaded antenna is longer than the base loaded. So once again, a quarter of the difference is about being center loaded rather than base loaded. So once again, even up on 28 megahertz, there's no real difference. The numbers shift, but the ratio doesn't. Once again, we see that because the center loaded antenna in this case happens to be 50% longer, that accounts for about three quarters of, of the reason why the antenna is more efficient. A quarter of the reason why it's more efficient is because it happens to be center loaded. And indeed, um, if we increase the uh, the length of a base loaded vertical with the same coil Q and everything as the center loaded to around about somewhere about 25% longer than the center loaded, then it starts to beat it. Uh, I've done the same calculation here using a nine foot uh, radiator, which I happen to use with a coil at the base, could be the slide winder coil, which will have a Q of around about 50 or so, or something, something close to that. And if you compare that to the center fed, uh, sorry, the center loaded diamond whip on 40 meters then that nine foot whip the 2.7 meter longer base loaded whip begins to win only by a fraction but it begins to win so the bottom line is center loaded mobile whips are better they they do give you providing that their coil q is either equal to or greater than the uh, base loaded version of the same length they'll be better how much better well, if the Q is the same, the difference would be around one and a half dB for a low for a low Q, and for a higher Q, we'll go up to about two and a half dB. That's on 40 meters, mind. Okay. But the thing is, once you start to increase the length of either of those antennas, so if you increase the length of the center lo center um, loaded mobile whip versus the base loaded one, then that difference will increase. And if you increase the length of the base loaded against the center loaded, then that gap will narrow until you come to a point where actually the base loaded version begins to beat it once it gets to about 20, 25% longer. So there we are. Center loaded mobile whips then, they're good, but they're not quite the silver bullet that some people, manufacturers and retailers maybe, will let you have believe. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, there's another video coming up uh, above there somewhere, and it's just kind of click subscribe over there if you want to too. Hope that's of use to you. Bit of fun, wasn't it? A very interesting topic, actually, and it's um, shone a new light onto it for me, certainly. 7-3, take care. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.